Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All can be seated. All can be seated. I want to preach uh, six or seven minutes. Amen. Amen. Get out your way. Amen. I'm not going to, as, as I was coming, I was worried and concerned. I said, Lord, why haven't you given me a sermon? Why haven't you given me a biblical topic or discussion? Why is there anything that you're not allowing me to extract or exegete out of your 66 book? Why is it, God, that you've allowed me to come even into your pulpit without a word? And as I began to search, my spirit began to allow me to understand that there is nothing in the Bible concerning an anniversary. There is nothing in the Bible that concerns the completion of a work or a break of a work. But it does talk about when you are done, amen, that you can sit, amen, and he will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. So amen. he began to encourage me right now. What I want you to do is speak on a thought. I said, okay, Lord, which thought is it? And as I began to dance, the Lord began to share with me the thought that he wanted me to express. So I'm going to preach something that is popular to you, something that is familiar to you. It is not a scripture. You know you don't need your Bible because you can't find it in the Bible. But watch me preach a cliche that you have overlooked and that you have even abused from your tongue. Look at your neighbor say, the title of this sermon is When I Think. When I Think. Amen. The cliche says that when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Or the first thing that I don't know who said this or who wrote it or who even had enough um, love and compassion for God to pin it in their heart or to pan it with their tongue. But I thank God that they begin to let me know that praise is not uh, something that has to energize me, but it is an intellectual thing. Watch this. We're going to go ahead and go home now. It's a just to me. 
thing, watch this preacher, that after you have suffered a while, oh my God, it suggests to me that after you pastored for a year, even Jesus had three um, years to his ministry. It went from a pair, excuse me, it went from a place of three and a half, but it was divided into three. His first year was a year of popularity. And then it says right there that the second year was a year of obscurity. Oh, that means there will come a time in the second year, Pastor, when your word will not validate enough for folk. It's going to be a time to where your smile used to convince them. It's going to be a time that when you call them, they won't answer the phone. It's going to be a time when you go and knock on the door. Oh, they'll cut off the TV and act like they're not there. It's going to be a time, watch this, that you cannot compromise with these folk. I know they're happy today, but the Bible suggests to me that there is a time in ministry, even when Peter would deny you. There's a time in ministry, even when Thomas will doubt you. There's a time in ministry, even when Judas will betray you. Oh, but there's still a time in ministry, but there are a few that will lay at the cross, even when you're crucified, and still glorified. Stop. <laughs>